Hey, what's good, people? Recently, I got a question on my YouTube channel asking how the hell I keep my DSP so low when I'm running in Reason. And the reality of it is when I'm filming these tutorials for you guys, I'm actually not processing a full song's worth of MIDI instruments and audio samples and stuff. So my DSP does really stay a lot lower in these videos. But I do have some tips and tricks on how to reduce your computer usage if you are having a problem with your DSP. So I wanted to show you guys my system preferences and a couple other tricks that I use. So let's go jump into Reason really quick and I'll show you uh, just kind of an average song that I have right here. It's It's got the, I, I'd say the average amount of tracks and MIDI instruments and stuff that I would use in a normal track. And we'll play it back real quick and show you the actual DSP power here is it's jumping up there pretty high. I'm not getting any uh, warnings that my computer can't handle it. I'm not getting any audio clipping or anything like that, the digital clipping that this some kind, sometimes causes, but it is peaking out there pretty high. So let's jump into the system preferences, go up to in on a Mac, it's up under reason and preferences on a PC. I'm not sure exactly where it's found, but I'm sure you guys can find it yourselves. We'll start off in general here. My mouse knob range I have set to very precise. That just gives me really, really fine control over what uh, settings I'm, I'm putting on my knobs and faders and stuff like that. You can change that if you want. Automation cleanup I have uh, set to heavy just because I don't like too many points in my automation if I record it with like a, a MIDI controller or something. I like reason to clean it up and kind of make it neater for me to go in and edit afterwards. So mine's set to heavy. Reduced the clutter settings and, and uh, the appearance is actually gonna save your processor power quite a bit depending on your settings here. If you're having a lot of trouble with processor, just hide all the cables and turn off the animation. I have mine set to hide auto routed cables. So that way when I do actually make a, a custom route myself, it will show that, that cable in my setup. The appearance um, show automation indicator, that's the little green box that's around whatever has automation set to it. I can turn that off. I do like to have my parameter tooltip shown so I can fine tune the number that I'm actually setting on my device. Those type of graphic renders that if Reason has to do them, it will take more processor power. So whatever you can take out of Reason's kind of task list or, or set of responsibilities as far as en re rendering graphics and stuff like that, it's going to save your processor power in the long run. The default song, that really won't matter. I have mine set to open up my master template every time I start a new session. A lot of you guys I know have had have that file. Some of you have watched the video where I explain how to do it. Others, if you want, you can go to indeeparts.net slash shop and actually pick up a version of that template for two bucks. Let's jump down to computer usage limit. This is probably the most important one that you can change to reduce your DSP. Right now you see I have mine set to none. That means there is no limit to the amount of processor power that Reason is allowed to have access to. If you are running other applications in the background, you might wanna turn this to like 95, 90, 85, depending on how much you're actually running in the background. But uh, for me, I run Reason alone most of the time if I'm producing, so it's okay to have no limit to the processor power. Low default sounds, that's really up to you. Every different instrument in Reason has a default patch that it will load up to, but I like to start my instruments from scratch, so I have that turned off. Trigger notes while editing, this will save your power a little bit, but only if you're in a MIDI roll, moving the note around, whenever you click it, it will actually play that note for you. Use multi-core audio rendering, this one's really important. If you guys are having a lot of processor power and you have a, a, a quad core processor, you can understand why. You might have this setting turned off and you're not allowing reason the access to the multiple cores. So make sure that one's set on. The self-contained samples when loading from disk, this will bloat your project a lot. It will actually kind of hurt your processor, but if you ever want to send a file off to a friend or, or something like that, 
make sure you click this and it will include all the samples in your project and send it off to them as well. Um, let's jump over to audio. This one's also kind of important for processor. Um, you need to choose the device with the lowest amount of latency and that would be your, your built-in audio, honestly. But I have an external audio card so I can plug a mic in and stuff. Um, I have mine set right here, M Audio Pre, and the sample rate is as high as it'll go. My buffer size right here is actually what's gonna control the, um, or actually affect the DSP computer usage. The buffer size here, the higher you have this number set, the better your processor will be at handling large amounts of sample data and stuff but you will also increase the latency of your recording. So if you notice that you hit a, a key on your keyboard and it takes like half a second for the note to actually play, this setting might be up too high. So the, the kind of balance that you need to find is how can you have the lowest amount of latency if you're recording vocals and you get that delay slap back in the headphones, you want that reduced as much as possible but you also want to allow the processor enough samples to really eat up and render your, your audio efficiently. So um, the settings I have right here cause an input latency of 8 milliseconds, we can see. So I put my recording la latency compensation to 8 milliseconds as well, and that will processor-wise try to kind of close that gap in latency as much as possible. Um, let's jump over to, I guess we'll cover the monitoring. If this is set to automatic, if you have an instrument or a microphone plugged in and you click on the channel in the sequencer window, it will automatically monitor that through your system. But you can turn it to manual, so you have to hit the green button on that track in order for audio to come back through your master channel. Uh, the control surfaces, this is going to be unique for everybody, so just hit this auto detect surfaces. It should be able to find any MIDI that's plugged in or USB that's plugged in. If not, you can add here and find the list of manufacturers and find your device, or you can honestly just put it in as, as an unknown and it'll still be able to use it. Keep this on standard, I would say, unless you have a big studio full of MIDI gear that you're trying to connect. And this next setting would be for the big MIDI gear heads. Also, all these buses, you can have larger MIDI setups routed through Reason, but I'll, I'll keep that for the advanced people. This last advanced setting, really, you don't need to check. If you need to know if you're playing on like a laptop keyboard, trying to play notes that way, this will show you the, the actual notes on the keyboard that you're hitting by pressing the letters. Um, send error reports and statistics. You can turn that off so it's not really using internet to send stuff back and forth while you're working. Scratch disk folder that's a little bit more advanced. Just keep it on default if you're a beginner. If you have an external drive that you like to record your audio to, you could set a scratch folder for reason to use. What this actually does is it saves all the data that you've changed in your project before you actually hit the save button. So it's kind of like a temporary holding place for your data until you decide to actually save it for good. So those are the settings that I have. Um, you can also notice if we scrub through my track or my setup here, everything's closed down. And this is another one of those tricks that you can use in order to force reason to use less graphic power. And if it's using less graphic power, it will be able to have more processor for the actual audio, which is the important stuff, right? Like Reason has all these really cool instruments and racks and everything, and they're, they're really beautiful, and that's kind of the, my selling point on the, on the app itself. But once you're done using it, just close it down, and it'll really kind of help your performance. So that's it for me today. Make sure to follow me at Just Science on Twitter. Go to jsibeats.com for my beats and license them yourself for your own projects. And thanks for watching. Bless.